to Thursday's Roundtable with Pastor Wes. What's up, guys? Pastor Matt. Happy New Year. We are so, and and myself, I almost forgot to introduce myself. Maybe I should have delegated that to one of you guys when I intro Pastor McGinty. I'm glad to have you guys with us today as we do our podcast. It is a new year. It is 2023. Can you believe that, guys? It's the year of Michael Jordan. It is the year of Michael yeah. Hey, I like that. Year of Michael Jordan. 2023. Well, uh, we're going to start off with a some predictions for the 2023 year, and we're also then going to move into what trended in 2022 in terms of Google searches. And I'm going to be the officiator for the quiz. I'm going to pit Pastor Wes and Pastor Matt against each other. First time officiating. Hope, hopefully, I don't totally uh, blow it. So we'll see how that goes. So let's start off with our trend, our predictions. <laughs> our predictions. Let's say our transition is predictions. So predictions. What Matt, you got, Matt? What you got, bro? Uh, I was just thinking, thinking through this and, okay, what's something that I'll predict? I predict that Disney will run out of animated movies to make into live action movies. So Impossible. They'll, so they're, <laughs> what they'll do is they'll go to the 90s treasure trove of the sequels. Remember when they oh, did like no. Aladdin 2 and Lion King 2? And uh, <laughs> wow. they're going to be the new classic. I, I, I what you doing? We need more mic. We can't hear more you. More cowbell. More, more cowbell. Um, no, I don't know if that's going to happen. But I was just th- I was thinking the other day. Okay, which ones could they still redo? You got Aristocats. Ariel, Return to the Fox, Sea. Fox and the Hound. Lion King. One and a half. Fox and the Hound would be yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Although they are making a Lion King prequel about Mufasa, aren't they? Like a live action version. I don't know. Would not that. surprise me. The first one was horrible. I'm trying, I mean, yeah, I'm trying to think back. What are some classic Disney? Even, I mean, we, they could go way back there and do a live action fun and fancy free or melody time. You know, all the uh, really <laughs> go straight back. to DVD. I feel like uh, streaming's the new straight no. to DVD. I I hope they do not do yeah. um, some of those from the '90s, like uh, <laughs> the Hunchback of Notre Dame or yeah. Oh man, uh, Tarzan. Uh, yeah, Tarzan, Tarzan too, or but you know what? Though a couple years back, I saw it went, went in the theaters. It was after it had been out for a while, but uh, the the live action Tarzan that came out like five years ago was actually a pretty good movie. Oh, I never saw really, that one. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a either. Disney film though. No, oh, no, no, no. This was like a real like live action legit mm-hmm. take and it looked pretty cool. Um, yeah, awesome. So, uh, do you have any more predictions for this year, Matt? Um, you know, the only other thing I was thinking, you know, maybe this is the year. This is finally the year where we get the flying car. The flying um, car. If anybody's gonna do it, car. if anybody's gonna do it, Elon's gonna do it. We got some um, flying taxis. I think there's one in Germany that's like it looks like a gigantic drone that's doing its thing. No, I, uh, I, 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 I've always thought there's just no way that's gonna happen. And then I've, I've been hearing some stuff lately where they're actually, uh, it wouldn't be this year, but they're they're figuring out how could we do this and how could we make this happen. And you know, just the other side of that is, do we really want that? Like, yeah. do we yeah. do we really want to open up? open up the air and space into for people to mm. if they don't drive well on the roads why would they drive yeah. well in the air yeah so. it's, a, it's a challenge right i mean drones and technology increased faster than the laws can kind of keep up with it you know if anybody could do it elon that's right hey elon could do it let's put up the elon so pastor <laughs> west what's your predictions for uh 2023 so I, I decided to go with a little bit of a theme here um go with the theme of movies because there's, there's a lot of Big time blockbuster movies coming out this year. Let me let me just give you a little little sneak peek. All right. All right. What we got in this next year? We've got Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumanium. New trailer last night. I know. Just, Creed three. Uh, we've got Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Uh, we've got there's a bunch of others, that, but we got Super Mario Brothers. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy three. We got mm. Fast Ten, Little Mermaid, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts, The Flash. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, mm. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer, The Marvels, the Barbie movie. Uh, Ooh, hey, add that to my list. No. Craven the Hunter, Dune Part 2, a Hunger Games prequel. Wait, Craven the Hunter? Mm-hmm. And Aquaman film. and the Lost Kingdom. Oh, apparently, I don't know if that's true or not. Supposedly, it's Legally Blonde 3. Uh, <laughs> so there's, anyways, hopefully it's like blockbuster movies. It's a big year for blockbuster movies, man. Yeah. So well, like, what's your prediction? Big, so which, which one's going to be the biggest one? Uh, I, think f- I think the one that's going to make, it's not going to be the biggest, but it's going to have a massive nostalgic factor, and it's going to make a pretty good bit of money, even though there's been a little bit of initial trepidation for some. I think Super Mario Brothers is going to be a smash hit. That's what I'm going to say. Smash hit. I, I, think it's gonna I be see a what smash you did hit. there. Yep, yep. Uh, I think you're going to see Mario Mania this summer. I, I agree. I think yeah. Mario's going to be a rebound top five Halloween costume. 
mm-hmm. this time mm-hmm. in it's October. It's entirely possible. Uh, I think the one that I feel really safe as far as superhero movies, feel very confident Spider-Man uh, Into the yeah. Spider-Verse is probably going to be the highest grossing that was superhero movie because first the first one, one was so good. One of the best mm-hmm. animated films of yeah. maybe the and past it, two and decades. And it looks like from the preview and from even the posters, like they are really pulling in like every version of Spider-Man <laughs> that anybody's, if you could be 95 or you could be five, whatever Spider-Man you grew up it with. It even has paper movie. bag Spider-Man yeah. in it. I mean, some real deep cuts. So I think that one, uh, and I think... I I I I know there's rumors that the Flash movie they think could be big. I think it's gonna bust. Yeah, I think so too. If, it, it's, if it's DC, unless it's Aquaman, Aquaman, or Wonder Woman, it's gonna bust. Aquaman to me sits on the fence. I could see it busting because of all the nonsense. But I could also see like it being great because the first one, anyways. Uh, and then I mean, Mission Impossible is gonna be good. Let's be. Did honest. you see that stunt that Cruise did? Like how he trained for yeah. it? Yeah, it was so, just amazing. And here's my other movie prediction. All right. So my other movie prediction is I think by the end of the year, it will be it will be basically impossible to buy a hard copy of a movie in a store. By the end of the year? By the end of the year. A hard copy of any movie? Like a new movie? Because there's always maybe, a Walmart. Like, maybe DVD there is a literally in. a new movie deal. But after outside of new releases, I think by the end of the year, it, just seeing how things have been going, I hope I'm wrong because I, I prefer buying movies to yeah. streaming, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. better quality when you're watching them. I think so. we're close to that. I don't think it'll happen this year. Like how many more streaming channels going to be? Like <laughs> We're back to just basically chant like regular cable. There's like yeah, a gazillion. Yeah, except you're paying. There's even yeah. bundles now, yeah. the Disney yeah. bundle. It's just, it's ridiculous. All right. Uh, I got some predictions. All right. I've got one that's music, one that's technology. I think, okay, I think this is the year the folding phone truly takes off. Okay, so the like folding, flip phones? Yeah, the, well, the folding phone that has that screen that opens up and gets yeah, bigger. Yeah. I think because Apple's starting to debut that now, too. So now well, That's all it's going to take is Apple to do it, and yep. then it's done. So I think the folding mm-hmm. phone this year is going to be... It's going to go big. It's going to go mainstream, not just like that. Hey, look what I have. It's, you know, yeah. whatever. And then my other prediction, this is more of a hope than a true prediction because, you know, whatever. Music always kind of goes in waves and retroactive stuff and yeah. kind of things come back. I think this is a year that 90s acoustic guitar rock makes a comeback. Okay. Give me give me an example of what you mean. Um, Like Third Eye Blind. Okay. Like Third Eye Blind. That'd be kind or, of fun um, to see some, some of like, that. Where she had a lead acoustic guitar yeah. really jamming out and being the forefront yeah. of the of the genre. Because I think this it, year it comes back. Aren't the nineties are quickly becoming what the eighties have been, right? Exactly. So. Everyone's in Grunge. like full like nineties nostalgia right now. Yeah. So that's those are my two predictions wow. for twenty twenty three. I, I I like that music prediction. That's pretty good. And I just thought of that three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got trending from 2022 as we try to yeah, just so stand 22 we're looking one forward more time. And we're going to look back a little. And these are trending Google searches. Wait, are we searches. going back to the future? Is that what you just yeah, said? Yeah, back <laughs> to the... Yeah, we're going to go back to 2022. These are the most trending searches on Google in 2022. We're going to do it by categories. So Matt and uh, Wes here, we're going to let you guys put down your score. We're not going to do first. I'm going to give you options and you choose and you kind of go okay. from here. All right. First category is what was a trending most in movies? Option one, Thor, Top Gun, Encanto, The Batman. Uh, what was true? Thor, Top Gun, Encanto, The Batman. I'd what was trending Top most? Gun. I want to say Top Gun, but then I'm like, but Encanto but probably got but then little kids aren't the what, but mom and I'm going to go in Kanto just to be different. All right. You say Top Gun. I do you say in Kanto. The yeah. answer is in Kanto. Oh, by the way, let me go back to my movie predictions. I think <laughs> guardians of the galaxy three will make a gajillion dollars. Yeah. I think that so one is the concluding well. yeah. trilogy. Yeah. I'll go with you on that one. I don't think it's going to be a good movie though. I, I have I, a feeling, I have a feeling yeah. it's not going to be that great. I think it's gonna be a tearjerker. Someone's yes. dying. Someone's going to die. Maybe they're all dying. <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> all right. Dave Bautista's already said he's done playing Drax. Never again. There yeah. you go. He's dead. All right. Next one. Sports teams. What was the most trending in sports teams? We got one. Boston Celtics. Two. Golden State Warriors. Three. Los Angeles Rams. Four. Philadelphia Phillies. So sports teams trending. Boston Celtics. Golden State Warriors. Los Angeles Rams. Philadelphia Okay, the Celtics had a massive scandal with their head coach. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to go with them for the sake of the fact that that's scandal. Yeah, everyone loves place. a good scandal. I'd love to say the Warriors, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there was any, any Warriors news that would cause them to be trending out of the ordinary. 
I'll yeah. go with the Celtics as well. Celtics. Okay, you're both going Celtics. The uh-huh. answer is Philadelphia Phillies. Oh. You both get it. Both oh, fail. Sorry. Okay. Boo boo. All oh. right. And just so that you know, there was one in here that we did not know because you both saw the answers. The category was people. What was the most trending person? And it was Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. And yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow. Yep. All right. So what is the category next is musicians and bands. What's the most trending in musicians and bands? Adam Levine. Little TJ. Cardi B. Migos. Am I saying little TJ right? (laughs) <laughs> or did I just get in trouble for mentioning? I don't even know who two of those are. <laughs> uh, I'll go Adam Little TJ, Levine. Cardi B, Migos, Adam Levine. Levine? I'll go Levine. Adam Levine. Adam Levine? Because he had a scandal too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what you got, bro? I take that back. I'm going to go Cardi B. That's what I was going to say too. I'm going to go Cardi B. As much as I don't want to say. You're both it. going Cardi B? Yeah. All right. It was Adam Levine. Sorry. Oh, man. I shouldn't have trusted my gut. Should have gone with my head. Yeah. Sorry, so man. sorry. All right. You, so far, it's just one gonna, and zero. You yeah. going to do that every time? All right. What was trending the most near me? Uh, yeah, when people search Google, hey, something, something near me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. hey, show me a Panera Bread near me. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. You know? All right. So, one, shoe store. Two, gas prices. Three, COVID test. Four, voting. Gas prices. Gas prices. Shoe yeah. store, gas prices. Gas prices. COVID test, voting. You say gas prices? Yeah, it gotta be gas, gas prices. prices. It is gas prices. Yeah. Well done. Okay. All, All right. right. We got two Follow to one my here. Head. Finally there got we one. Go. You got right. two. What was the trending most in tickets? In tickets. Bad Bunny. Blink-182, which I cannot believe they're making a comeback. Wow. Hey, that's part of my yeah, prediction. 90s and 90s, yeah. you know, rock. They weren't so much uh, acoustic driven, though. Taylor Swift. Oh, for it, that's a, don't, don't even go. That's yeah. Taylor, Swift. Taylor Swift trending most in tickets. Bad Bunny, Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, it's Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. It's the whole meltdown. Both of you say Taylor Swift. Yeah. The answer is Disneyland. Whoa! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm gonna do the, uh, the 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 conspiracy one for that one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I would have thought with the whole Ticketmaster debacle that Me was too. a shoe in. Yeah. A shoe in. Well, wow. it was uh, it was a very narrow thing. Like it, people talked about it. For a very very short amount of time, whereas I think Disneyland's always. But it Disneyland. like didn't it break Twitter? Yeah, like it got talked Ticket about Master. so much that, yeah. t- that like yeah, Ticketmaster. Yeah, yeah. They shut down Ticketmaster. Oh, okay. All right, what was trending the most in TV shows? One, Stranger Things. Two, Euphoria. Three, The Watcher. Four, Inventing Anna. Trending in TV shows: Stranger, Stranger Things, things. Euphoria, Stranger The things. Watcher, Inventing Anna. The answer you both say Stranger Things. Yeah. Answer is euphoria. I didn't want to. Yeah. yeah, let's move to the next question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't even, hardly know anything about that show. Yeah. All right, what was trending the most in news? One, Ukraine, Queen Elizabeth, that one. Uh, Powerball, four election results. What was trending the most in news? Ukraine, Queen Elizabeth, Powerball, election results. I want to say Ukraine. But that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Queen, Queen, Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, I was you guys go Ukraine. Close second for me, but lock in your answer. Ukraine. Ukraine. I go Elizabeth. Elizabeth. The answer is election results. Wow. Seriously. Well, there you go. Maybe that's encouraging. People care more about the results of the election than. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of people making some big predictions for a red wave, and it was not a red wave. All right. What was trending the most in songs? Okay. One. We don't talk about Bruno. From Encanto, two, <laughs> Jiggle Jiggle, Duke and Jones and Lewis and Thoreau. I've never even heard of that song. So Jiggle Jiggle, <laughs> three, Unholy, four, as it was. So three was Unholy. Whatever the Encanto Sam Smith one and is. Kim yeah, Pont- Petros, Bruno. Four, as it was, Styles. Yeah. Yes, Harry Styles. All right. So do y'all, what do you say? We can't. We don't talk about Bruno. Don't talk about Bruno. Yeah. yeah. The answer is we don't talk about Bruno. Yeah. So, what is your? I mean, you got one so far. Two? No, that's two. That's two. Got three. That's three. You got three. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. This is the. Um, I should have four, but I, messed, you know, just completely goofed that up. I'll do so. two real quick. All right, here. How to pronounce? What was trending the most, and how did to your pronounce? Voice just crack. It probably did. Oh, I'm gonna okay. just mispronounce all these. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> how to pronounce? Kiev. Qatar. 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 Omicron. And puzzle. You're saying which of those were... Which one did people Google, Google how to pronounce the most? Kiev. Oh, how to pronounce. Qatar. Qatar. Or how do you say? 
Omicron, and Puzzle. Let's say Qatar. Qatar? Either Qatar or Kiev. 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 Kish. <laughs> All right. He's thinking. I need to get a, like a, um, a trivia. Um, just killer. so there can be some drama for the last question, I'll go Omicron. Omicron? You say Qatar? Mm-hmm. The answer is Qatar. Yeah. Qatar. Qatar. I oh. thought that would be. I'm about to is. Google that myself because I don't know how to say it. <laughs> All right, last one. I so you got that. So it's what? So three, 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 three. three. Yeah. All right, this is the tiebreaker. You guys ready? What was trending the most in all searches? Okay, all searches. One election results. Two Betty White. Three Wordle. Four Queen Elizabeth. What was the top of all trending searches? One more time. Election results. One, two Betty White. Three Wordle. Four Queen Elizabeth. I'm um, gonna go election results. Election results. See, but that's like a that's like a one, like a one season thing. But I guess I could be if you got to choose something different if you're uh, gonna have a chance of winning. Unless you want to just hey, I just want to go for a tie. Or maybe. Wordle. You're gonna go Wordle. We'll do Wordle. And you went you went to election results. Yeah. The answer is I need to get a drum roll here. Nope, that's the joke one. Is Wordle. Oh, oh way, way to go, go man. Matt. Hey, good job. You got the final score. Well done. That Wordle. Is More people cared about Wordle. <laughs> well, you than... think about it. You, and it wasn't an app. You had to play it in a browser. Yeah. You know, so in order to play Wordle, you had to like. Yeah, ask Wordle, Wordle's for it. an app. There's Not for the Android. Oh, I didn't yep. know that. Not well, for it's Android. ongoing. You know, the, those yeah. things you mentioned were My like, figure was season. like people are looking yeah. up Wordle answer of the day so they can get there. You know. There you go. So anyways. All, All right. right. 2022. What a trend. Yeah. Here True we are, that. 2023. Lots of stuff happened. Lots of stuff. Uh, on that note, as we move here into 2023, we're gonna we're gonna have some fun. Uh, at least today, maybe maybe might break into a, a bonus episode or a second session. But um, Sunday, we uh, you guys were there, and maybe some of you listening, you uh, uh, you were either there or have listened to the sermon. We walked through a passage in James, where. Um, James James throws up an illustration of some businessmen who are, who who are very confident and assured in their planning, and in their planning and where cities are going to go live in, what kind of business they're going to do, their confidence that their skills are going to produce the result they believe it's going to produce. And using this example, James drives this this um, this point in the passage that uh, because God is sovereign over life. And as believers, as followers of Christ, saved by grace through faith, we, we, we have quite literally in being saved acknowledged he's not just sovereign over life, but he is actually the Lord of our lives, of our details, of our purpose, of our path. Because those truths are there, uh, we're not to go planning and ordering our life uh, with um, basically excluding him out or just checking his box, but truly in, in a humble diligence, we're to walk, we're to seek, we're to submit and plan and order our life in line with his will. That's that's essentially, if you want kind of the long, long run on sentence sur- uh, summary of Sunday, that's where we went. And um, man, there's, there's just a lot that comes with unpacking that practically in Life and so part of what we want to do today, I want to redefine something as we jump into this discussion, and from it, look at at least one one part of that. So, so you heard me mention if you heard Sunday, or and I just mentioned a second ago, the way that we plan and order our life, and by plan or order, I, I do mean two kind of specific things. By plan, what what I mean, pastor's definition, not Webster's. What I mean is like. Where am I going to go to school? Who am I going to marry? When are we going to have kids? Uh, what job are we going to take? What house are we going to buy? Where are we going on vacation? When are we going to retire? Are we going to... Plans meaning more long-term life decision, very specific things. Should I keep my Panera Bread subscription all year long <laughs> yeah, or not? Yeah. You know, It's more minor plans. The things that keep um, you up at night, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then by order, what I mean are the way that we go about planning and ordering our, our daily life. You know, what we value, what, what what are the use of time and what we commit to each and every day, each and every week, kind of the, the daily grind, mundane stuff. You know, are we, are we in, you know, if you're a high school student, what kind of curriculars am I involved in? If I'm a parent, what are we allowing our kids to do? If I'm, you know, how are we ordering and structuring, structuring our life? And is that daily order centered around my will, my agenda, my plan, even 
for good things centered around the plan and agenda that society feeds me or have I am I am I in a posture of humility out of which I am diligently pursuing the the will and ways of God in the way that I order my daily life. And so that's really what we're so we want to break down just on some real practical levels today and, and process how do we apply that? How do we order our daily life in a way that it is in humility and diligently pursuing God's will and God's ways and how we order day to day life. And I think that's foundational before you get to the other thing yeah. of how do we then plan our life in that way. So really the order develops the humility, right? How we order our daily life, it's what cultivates this attitude and and the planning is the diligence, right? And it creates some diligence also to order life, obviously. But I like that phrase, um, diligent, uh, humble diligence, yeah. right? To plan, but in light of God's sovereignty, in light of God's agenda. So... Um, in, light of, in light of his in, in light of his lordship so i think matt you want to kind of throw out when we think about um how we are to we think about god's will god's ways mm-hmm. what are what are some of the things god is very clear in his word with like my god's will for my life is <clears throat> and here's ways that he gives us that that impact every day what are what are some of yeah, those things? So principles for godly living that we can determine god's will for all of us regardless of the situation starting with those those basics, first of all, um, prayer. Um, yeah. You talked about this on on Sunday, West, but just in a humble attitude of prayer, just seeking God and saying, okay, God, these are the these are the things that I, I'm thinking or even looking to, at the new year. These are things that I want, but God, I, I want to just ask you. Like, I don't want to just tell you and ask, are you okay with it? Like, I want to ask you. I want to talk to you. I want to, and I don't want to just want to talk to you so that I can get an answer. I want to talk to you because you want me to get to know you. Yeah. And um, imagine so, if we just hung out with our wives and never talked to them. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it, it sure this is unspoken, just you can sit next to each other, reach this body language, but, mm-hmm. and people assume that prayer is this one way street. Right. Right. Half of prayer is listening. Like, what do you mean by listening and hearing audible voices or no, allow God to direct your thoughts. And as you think about things and people you wouldn't normally think about unless you engage in this faithful activity of prayer. Like, wow, I didn't think about this the sin of my life I've been holding on to. I need to confess that. Or I hadn't thought about that relative in years. I want to pray for them. Maybe I'm going to call them after I'm done praying. Yeah. I think God directs our thoughts and it's very subtle and it's very, very powerful. And when we think about, and what, um, yeah, let's, why don't we, uh, Matt, keep, let's, and, and both of you guys, let's, let's probably, let's maybe hit, what are some of the key big, big picture order items? And we'll go back and, and walk through each yeah, of them. Yeah, sure. So, um, so prayer, prayer, fellowship, um, fellowship with other believers, uh, scripture meditation, um, not just reading the word, but thinking about it. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about it more, yeah. uh, <laughs> service giving, um, accountability, wise counsel, and then our physical and mental health. Um, these being just several of the key things, if, if we're going to truly walk in humble diligence, um, these are principles, these are disciplines that we need to have as a part of our, our communication. Yeah, and I and I think maybe the way to phrase it too is these are these are things that if we're in it's interesting. We both do these things um doing these things certainly helps us walk humbly. Mm-hmm. But we also are doing them out of humility. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz you could do these things not in humility. You could end. do these things to check the boxes and mm-hmm, hey, you sure. know, I got to check all five boxes on my offering envelope, you know, each Sunday for those of you who are old enough to remember that thing. Um but but hum- these these really are both they do keep us humble, but they are outwork and expressions of sure. of really being humble and understanding it's not about me. Understanding those those things that the passage Sunday taught us that uh, we don't know everything. Right. Uh, we're we don't have all the power and the strength. We're frail and we don't possess the ability to cause everything to happen. We're dependent and acknowledging those realities forces us to go, well, who doesn't know everything, who does have all the power and who is in complete control? Well, that's that's Jesus Christ. That's yeah. God Almighty. And so we walk in humility there. So um, yeah, let's 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 break down some of these just practically. What it means to engage. How how do we not just check a box, but how do we order our lives where these yeah. things are 
And what are the challenges to them too? Yeah. I think that's one of the things we unpack is that I think we all kind of know these are things we need to make space for, but let's identify the challenges to them. What keeps us from really devoting our time to prayer or what keeps us from showing yeah. up Sunday morning to church and, and really kind of identifying those and making a plan so for it. Prayer is the first one. And I threw this out Sunday as well as an example, literally God says, so we say, Hey God, I want to order my life according to your will and your ways. If the Lord wills, that's what the passage says. If the Lord wills, we will. Okay. So Lord, what's your will? Boom. Pray without ceasing. What's the next verse? This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You want to know, as a believer, what's God's <laughs> will for you? It's to be in a posture of prayerfulness always. Yeah. So how do we, and understanding that, we don't mean literally you do nothing but pray. Not even You don't see that as was his habit. Jesus drew away and got in prayer. It's the idea that I am constantly walking with the Lord in such a way that whether it is me pulling away to pray in private, whether it's me praying on the go, I am in a, I'm living out a prayerfulness always. So how do we, how do we order that? What does it look like to order our lives in that way? What are some practical expressions of that? What are, and what are the challenges we're going to have to resist in order to do it? You know, I think what's really fascinating about this is we sometimes we, we treat God rightly so sometimes different than other relationships we have. But in other ways, we think it's we don't treat it like an actual relationship. Like there needs to be this constant communication. You think the relationship you have with Christ is supposed to be incredibly intimate and very, very deep and profound. And for those who who are married, like think about the constant communication you have with your wife. Like I'm always texting her about this or that. Like, hey, can you pick this up? Can you print this? And I'll be here at this so-and-so time. And there's this, you know, when we fail to communicate, problems happen. Because uh, I assumed you were going to do this or I thought that you were going to be here at this time. Well, I never said anything. Or, you know, things break down when communication breaks down. When our communication with God breaks down, you know, a lot of other things break down too. Um, and so how do we stay in constant communication with God? I almost wish there's like an app where you could text God things, you know, <laughs> it's like you're actually physically doing something to be, make yourself more mindful. Um, but we're on our phones all the time. Like what's a way you could maybe use your phone to remind yourself to prayer. Do, do you set an alarm to, to pray at a certain time that you know is a good space for that? Do you put like visual reminders on your, um, you know, post-it notes on your mirror to pray for a relative or to pray for something specific you're working on that week. Yeah. And I think what a practical aspect of that too is, is developing the mindset that realizes that prayer is not, um, on one hand, scripture absolutely teaches there should be a reverence in our prayer because we are, mm. we are talking to God. Yes. On the other hand, we see a scripture indicates that there should be an unbelievable intimacy in our prayer because we are talking to God who is our Father, if we're in Christ. So there's this this beautiful harmony of both <clears throat> reverence and intimacy. Um, but then realizing in that that prayer is not a speech to God. Mm-hmm. I think people yeah. get discouraged from that because they think I've, I've got to sound eloquent. I've got to make a speech. And that is not at all what it is. Um, in fact, Jesus actually condemns that. That's a different subject for a different time. Um, uh, but getting away from the idea that prayer is connected to only certain moments. Pray when I wake up, pray over meals, you know, yeah. Lord, I lay me down to sleep in your graces keep me what you know whatever kind of those those liturgies are that we've whether they came from uh, some denomination or they just came from pop culture it's gonna be a mindset switch to go prayer means yeah you can pray when you wake up and you can also pray as you're driving to work and you can also pray as you get up from your desk and take a little walk around around the office real quick to just stretch your legs you can pray and turn your your thoughts you can pray scripture you can pray for someone else you can say god who's someone to pray who's someone you'd have me pray for right now and if the Lord brings a name to mind, you know, I think, I think some of those prayer times are in the shower. What you're talking about is a, um, (laughs) sounds weird, but no, no, no. Well, I mean, I think (laughs) it was A.W. Tozer who talked about some of some, at a certain point when his kids were young, his quiet times were in like the mud closet because it's the only place he could get completely alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the whole point is, I think, I think what you're describing is there's a little bit of a mindset change that for some of us, we're going to have to have in order to order our lives. Yeah. And I think, I think too, um, what we have to do is we have to to maybe take some of the things that we're doing and um, obviously turn those off. Like yeah. if you're if you're glued to a screen, whether it's your phone, whether it's your computer, or if you have to have music playing in the car the whole time, like learning to step away from those things. Even praying, holding your phone, like put your phone down, like so you're not tempted to. Oh, you, you got a text? What? You know, and that interrupts your prayer time, but turn the radio off when you're driving and just talking, having a conversation with God. There are those things, things that we do every day that are part of our, our routine where if we would just substitute, it doesn't have to be 
all the time, every day, but yeah. just yeah. saying today, rather than listen to music, God, I just, I just want to talk to you, you know, yeah. or I just want to be quiet. Silence is let a, you, such a premium these yeah, days, you know? Yeah. Let, let and, you and speak. Just for the record, for those listening, coming before the Lord, Father, here I am, and then being quiet, both in terms of not actually talking out loud or in your mind, um, and and being in a place where you're still, and I'm not saying you can't do it for a walk, but if you're doing it while you're doing something active, like, hey, I'm going to go for a walk, but I'm going to be quiet, just make sure you're actively keeping your mind yeah. focused and not mm-hmm. drifting. But silence is a part of prayer. Mm-hmm. Listening is part of prayer, mm-hmm. not just me constantly constantly talking we live in a culture of silence is absolutely terrifying yeah you know even for me like i like to always be doing something i like to always be listening to something so getting silent is is a hard thing for me to do but i'm Amen. really glad when i do it oh sorry, <laughs> sorry. just getting that guy to not talk oh, you, you know what the prayer ministry i was in college and i was an r8 the prayer ministry at dbu came in and they want they wanted to lead a little time for us and um that that year particularly that training one of the things they did is they said okay um what we're gonna ask you to go do we're going to ask you to find a place where you are alone in terms of you cannot see or hear another human being. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't mean you've got to go somewhere where like no one can get to you. But so I, so I went into the stairwell where there was not anybody near and they said for the next 20 minutes, we want you to get a place where you can't see anybody and you can't hear anybody. And for the next 20 minutes, we want you to just sit in total silence before the Lord. Yeah. That was the assignment. And of course, that was back in two thousand like eight when when this was a m- much lower sure uh, reality. But like, so. you're, if you're not ADHD, but if you are, it's a struggle. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's, even it's if you're still. not, it's, yeah, it's it's tough. <laughs> well, and posture too. Like even if you're you, you go to bed and you lay down, like, I'm just gonna pray. Like no, 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 no. You, you can't lay down and pray yeah. because you'll fall asleep. And we try to teach, teach that to our kids too. <laughs> like you know, we'll sit at the table and I know. We're trying to build some routines. So we try to pray before dinner, but yeah. they're like eating and like, guys, we haven't prayed. It's just stop, you know, and just to get them to hold their hands together and stop to keep them from stop eating and to close their eyes. They're not distracted is a battle. So you do like, all right, are we going to pray? One, two, three, clap hands. All right. You're not ready. You're still drinking your milk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, just having something routine to help you, especially for kids. You're trying to, ta- to teach them that, but we have to get yeah. beyond the routines. Routines yeah. are good. But that the constant mindfulness. And I think the challenge with prayer it is it is a spiritual thing to do. So sometimes we have to make the spiritual physical. How can we put yeah. prayer in front of us? So we're constant reminders. And ancient you know Christians did this. The Jewish people did this. All kinds of things to make the spiritual physical. Yeah, and I, and we see those things like taking a posture, um, laying face first on the ground, yeah. prostrate, mm-hmm. taking a posture where you're on your knees. One of the things that's easily overlooked is uh, pray aloud. Yeah. yeah. If you're pray in the car aloud. by yourself, do it. Pray aloud. I actually verbalize. In fact, sometimes in my in my prayer life, and I probably don't do this as much as I ought to, because if we're honest, it feels a little awkward. But we need to push past the awkwardness if we're going to order our lives <laughs> in this way. But, it's only weird if you make it weird. Um, sometimes if I am praying silently, I get real caught up on something. But somehow if, if when I all of a sudden when I start to put physical out loud words to it, yeah. my ability to pray becomes far more clear. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. And I'm able to actually verbalize and express and rather and not just kind of ramble trying to get around. Yeah. Try. So there's something about, yeah, I've actually said physical expression and like prayer. Like for me, like prayer journaling. Like yeah. I uh, Talking, some people aren't, some of you aren't talkers, but maybe you're a writer. Yeah. For me, when I prayer journal, my prayers are so much more meaningful and focused and I can look back at them and that's when I really feel like, I don't even feel like I've really had meaningful prayer unless I write it down. Yeah. It sounds weird to say, but that's just, that's how I'm wired. Yeah. We're going to time here. We've, we are going we, 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 we <laughs> so let, let, me, let me connect prayer real quick. We're going to go kind of out of order here a little bit, but prayer also is going to be typically many times in our lives connected to our intake of scripture. Sure. Mm-hmm. So part of God's order, um, ironically, there's no verse in scripture that says that God's will is to have a quiet time. Mm-hmm. But what we do see in scripture is as was Jesus' habit, he got alone. So there's habits, not just in the life of Jesus, but since Jesus is God, we'll, we'll start with him as the best example. Um, there's a pattern of getting alone to be with God. Um, we know that there's obviously, we've been talking about prayer, and then scripture's really clear about God's word is our daily bread. 
Mm-hmm. It's something that should be consumed and intaken on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Scriptures command more than anything with the word of God is that we meditate on it, which is this idea of it's on my lips and I am repeating it over and over and over. I am chewing it, swallowing mm-hmm. and rechewing and swallowing and rechewing and swallowing. It's this is the idea. And so, um, you know, on a practical level, it means how we think through our day. If in our day there is no place where we are intaking in scripture, then we are not ordering our, we are, we are ordering our days according to our agenda. We are not ordering our days according to his. Yeah. And in fact, it actually means we are walking through our day malnourished and starving ourselves. And that's a great way of putting it about it being our daily bread. Because <laughs> when you eat something, you consume it. It becomes part of you, you know, yeah. and it, so we can't just hear God's word we have to actually go deeper than just listening to it. We have to actually let it up, allow it to be part of us, memorizing it, repeating it, putting it in front of you, writing verses on the mirror, whatever you got to do, allow it to become part of you, actually digest it. I mean, there's a reason why the psalmist referred to God's law as sweet honey. You know, yeah. they use these word descriptions and food descriptions that just capture how good God's word is and for us to consume it. Yeah. And, and, and man, and I just encourage you listening. Um, there are so many ways to intake the word. Sure. Um, you can sit down and probably most simple sit down and just read your Bible, mm-hmm. but you can read a verse. You can read a paragraph. You can read a whole chapter. You can read a whole book. Like, right. There's, there's the, the bigger thing is not how much quantity are you consuming, but how, 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 and what kind of quality are you consuming? Yeah. Um, you can do that. You can, um, uh, there's verse verse of the day app, so that, that'll, that'll send you a verse of the day. You can, if wow. you're real auditory, you can listen to the Bible read aloud. Mm-hmm. By the way, you can read your Bible to yourself aloud. Mm-hmm. You'll notice a lot more things a lot of times when you do that. Um, you Aren't can you can take a verse, you can read and say, I'm, I, I'm going to read a chapter, and I'm going to every day find, I'm going to pick one verse that just stands out, and I'm going to yeah. write that verse down on a sticky note, or I'm going to put that verse down on note in my phone, and what I'm going to do is throughout the day, I'm going to pull out that note, or I'm going to pull it up on my phone, and I'm going to think about that verse for five minutes. Yeah. There's so, I mean, there, man, I'm, Is there like so a new like Bible that basically lays out like the Psalms, where it's like real wide print and very spaced out so you can just meditate on like a single psalm or a section of psalms and they have like a picture that goes with it and so yeah, there's a like, lot of stuff like that there's right. journal journal bibles or i've seen now like individual books of the bible being printed and in, in something that's designed for you to open up and mark all up and write that's and cool. write on the sides and journal and there's there's a lot of tools today no doubt. that you can use to to meditate on on scripture matt you got anything else you want to tie into that and just that order in our life <clears> before we yeah no I, we, i'm the challenges this maybe. last this last year for me just going back and, and going through the bible daily and and um listening to, so you talked about listening to it that's that's what i've been doing but also there's an app that, that i've used that has helped me kind of uh recap all that to be able to go back and say okay what what's the main theme and then thinking through on that throughout the day and and praying that looking for the picture of god in in every day and then applying that to my life and so uh, it's vital. Like if, if yeah. we really want to know God's will, we got to know God and to know yeah. God, we got to talk to God, but we also have to know what God has done throughout history um, and seeing what God's word says about who he is and getting to know him. So. By the way, nothing says you read one verse today. You have to read the next verse tomorrow. You can read yeah. the same chapter of scripture for 30. Go back. Absolutely. There's so much freedom from the yeah, Lord. The, the bigger thing is just don't, don't be afraid to get in the word. There's a big difference between reading scripture devotionally and reading it like as a study, you know, because you're really trying to study and understand a passage and really do a deep dive. Yeah, read it all in big chunks and whatever. But devotionally, there's a little bit of flexibility there. Um, You do your diligence when you read it, obviously. Don't just, you know, import your own interpretation into it. But there is flexibility. And God has wired us all differently, and he understands that. And there's you know, yeah. understanding some different ways for us to approach it. And one right. other thing that's, that, that's come to mind to just cap how important this aspect of the word is for our conversation about how do we order our life around God's will. Um, Romans tells us as believers not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Um, first Peter chapter one, yeah. he says, similarly, don't, um, don't, don't walk out the patterns of your former lusts, but, but be holy as I am holy. And we know that word holy means set apart, means righteous. It, that is the this, this set apart, this uniqueness that stands in contrast to the ways of the world. So 
be holy. So we're called to live lives that are set apart, set apart because they are in the pattern of Christ in a world that is opposed to that pattern. And in Jesus' prayer in John 17, here's where I'm tying this all together. He prays and says, Lord, sanctify, Lord, set them apart. Um, or he, or he, and then he says about what what is the tool to set them apart? Your word. May they be sanctified. May they be set apart in truth. Your word is truth. Yeah. So part of the key for us ordering our, and we talked about the subtlety of how we can begin to order our days in the pattern of the world and not even realize it. Mm-hmm. If you really want to resist that, eating your daily bread is vital to keeping us sharp mm-hmm. and no alert to that. So, um, McGinney, what, 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 one, what one you want to hit next? Uh, let's talk about fellowship and let's do it kind of briefly because I think there's some things I think we all know. Well, I wouldn't even make that assumption. You know, if you're following Christ, you're not supposed to do it alone. Yeah. You know, it is designed to fail alone. We need each other. We need each other's different gifts and strengths and weaknesses. You might think, oh, I don't need to be there. But guess what? When you're not there, someone else is missing you. Yeah. Someone else is is not getting the benefit of your presence, your gifts, your personality, your encouragement or challenge or whatever it might be. But you not being there, you're depriving somebody else of the gift of what God is doing in your life. So while you might think, I don't need to be there. Well, guess what? Someone else needs you. You know? Yeah. And this comes straight out of scripture, right? Uh, do not, Hebrews chapter 10, do not neglect the gathering, the coming together, as is some, as is the habit, as is the order of daily life for some. But be faithful in coming together all the more as you see the day approaching. There is a clear call in scripture to be faithful, to be present in the church body. And I think this yeah. is one, um, I mean, all three of us have, have spent time I'm at is still in student ministry. This is an easy one to pick on with student ministry, and, and, and we could pick on so many others, but um, we're talking about ordering life. Remember, we're not talking about long, when we use order, I mean daily life. We're not talking about like long term, where you're yeah. going to go to college, but how many students, and even when I was growing up, how many of my peers did they and their parents decide on a daily order of life where they're going to play on that tournament team or they're going to be a part of that band, knowing that half the Sundays of the year they would be outside the fellowship of the gathered body? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a great example of how not to order your life if you are seeking to order your life. Don't, I'm not saying you can't miss a Sunday. Yeah. But there's a difference between missing a Sunday here and there. There's a difference of being out a time or two and there and, and intentionally making a decision to involve myself in something that is going to for a prolonged season. Especially when we're talking about recreation. I'm also not sometimes you've only got one option for a job and that job's gonna require you to work on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's things like that that happen. I've worked, in fact, talking about go ahead. Rec- I was primarily talking about decisions we typically make like this happen to be decisions usually of recreation, not decisions where we have no other option. Yeah. Yeah. And some people, they generally have jobs that they have to work on Sunday mornings. In fact, my neighbor was telling me just, I think yesterday morning, he works for the mail, mail yeah. company. And he said, Hey, a bunch of my buddies who work for the mail, you know, the U S postal service and stuff, they have to work Sunday mornings. <laughs> You know, there's a church down the street that has now started 5 p.m. worship services yep. for those who work Sunday mornings that can go there after work, and they're doing really well with it. You know, they're, they're getting creative about how to reach people who may be in a bit of conundrum that want to go to worship service, but their job really prevents them doing that or their schedule or what have you, or not being an alarm clock. I don't know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so good for them for doing something creative and mm-hmm. still trying to make something work. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I would, um, I would combine personally in fellowship and accountability because when yeah. you're with other believers, um, you, you hear their stories and you will. So as, as you're kind of running through this whole concept of God's will and knowing God's will and, and how do I discern what God's will is? I mean, getting wise counsel and, and sharing that with, with people that, um, godly friends, but also, um, teachers, leaders where you say, Hey, uh, what do you think about this? And yeah. getting their their input, also getting them to pray for you, pray mm. that God would would guide you and direct you, and that you know it, He would make it clear what what He wants you to do. But um, man, just the power of connecting and fellowship with other people, and then um, sharing your story with them, but also hearing from them and and hearing you know you you say we're going to do this this year, and then they say yeah you know we tried that last year it didn't go so well, and it causes you to stop and go okay. 
maybe I should uh, look into that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, I should, maybe I should reconsider that. So there's there's tremendous power. And, in I, and I think, too, godly here, people. you really can couple fellowship, accountability wise counsel, and service and giving. All of those sure. really yeah. are. And worship are, means, I mean, they're to some degree, too, but it's more of a big picture thing yeah. for a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just the reality is we do need. The the, the 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 true fellowship of the spirit with other believers that the joyful sharpening. encouraging we yeah. accountability the sharpening the reality is and you hit it um it's not just what we need with other people it's the fact that god has gifted us as believers with spiritual gifts to go you know uh, again I've, I've said this many times like and hey, what spiritual gift do you have everybody in the church i have the spiritual gift of encouragement that's awesome when's the last time you encouraged somebody yeah <laughs> and, and when's the last time you were present to nice encourage somebody yeah yeah and and so the reality is we've god's given us these gifts that when the arm doesn't show up yeah the body can't throw the ball yeah uh, when the leg doesn't show up the body can't run when the, when the arm doesn't show up the shield can't be right ra- you know I mean, you, you go on down and, and and the reality is then think about how we order our lives on a daily basis are we so busy with extracurriculars that we're we're not we're not present at church are we are we yeah. so busy with all these other pods that we're not really giving anything to those at church are we in the order of our lives man for some of us it's going to be there's been some past hurt relationally maybe even I was inside just about of the to bring church. That up. How can we help walk through and heal that? I by no means mean just go in there and act like it didn't happen, but how can we walk through and, and bring some healing and see that so we can be faithful? Or, um, I, I don't know how many I caught off guard Sunday with. You know, I'll talk about all the, the youth that go to college and leave the church. Well, there's another group that leaves mm-hmm. the church. All the parents whose kids are finally out of the house and mm-hmm. they go, hey, we're free. We can do all the traveling we want. We can. And I'm not saying if you're a retired couple or soon to be, you can't go travel, you can't go RV, but ordering our life means one i'm not going to go make a decision that is going to separate me for a prolonged period of time Mm -hmm. two we're going to be praying about hey lord we do feel like we've got some freedom to travel but would you guide our travel right would you and if we're if we're going overboard please show us and we we, we're not asking you to please show us as if you won't but we're we're trying to be submissive in how we order and make these plans when you talked about the 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 concept of serving. So we have all this time now, God, what could we do other than just thinking of ourselves? What, yeah. what could we do to give back to the church and, and to me? And we, we've, we've got some incredible I, people I, in our church know, that are doing that right now. I yeah. know yeah. it just I, blows my mind. I almost used this couple as an example Sunday, but I didn't because I, cause they're they're They were visitors of ours from out of town. I thought, Oh, if I use this example and then people figure out people are going to flock and I don't want to, I don't want to make them flock word. But, um, when I was in college ministry, there was a couple that he, uh, he's a successful businessman. Um, very successful, had a great career out in Houston and uh, such a great career that I, I kind of got to, to look at early retirement. Mm. And he didn't just go, oh, early retirement, so let's retire, let's move where we want, let's build a big house and let's go off. At the golf course. What he did is they, they were really prayerful. Hey, is it time? Yeah, okay, they feel like it's time to retire. Um, yeah, they, you know, they had an idea where they wanted to move back to, but they sought the Lord in it and they felt like the Lord didn't, didn't say no, so they got peace, so they were going to retire to College Station. And they have a, um, they've got a really nice house. What you don't know on that side of the story is, is as they were praying about retiring and praying about, okay, Lord, we're going to get kind of, we have the ability to build a, a true retirement home. Part of what the Lord stirred on their hearts was to build a home that was built in such a way and possess the ability to do a couple things, to have college students over mm. all the time and to even build it in such a way that they would have places that if a college student needed a place to live for even a, even a year that they could live. And I have watched that couple for the wow. years I've known them. There is not a week where students are not in their house and they have That's housed amazing. multiple college students who have wow. been in some awful situations and given them a place of protection and home from which to do it. So because that was how God led them as they prayed through, That's how do cool. we retire and what do we build? Again, it's, you know, sometimes you worry when you give those examples, everybody just thinks, Oh, I'm just supposed to go sell everything and move over to the middle of nowhere. Maybe, it may also just be that God wants you to retire in a certain place and use the resources he's given you in faithful sure. stewardship to mm-hmm. to serve the body in a way and be faithful in that. You know, Wes, you touched on something earlier in, in terms of something that might be keeping someone from fellowship. And that last cate- category we haven't really talked about is how do I order my life to take care of my temple, to take care of this yeah. body that God has given, to take care of my mental health. And there's a genuine connection to our spiritual health and mental well-being. You can't sort of say, this is my physical health and put that in a box and spiritual health in this box. They're yeah. all, there's this interconnection to it. And I think for some people, there's 
I, it's really, I think it's genuinely easy sometimes as pastors to kind of brush off. You just need to get the church. You know, some you just kind of you just get yourself the church. Just whatever you know, hang ups or whatever, you just get yourself to church. And I think some people have some genuinely traumatic and hurtful things for happen sure. to them at church. And for them, the idea of walking through the doors of the church is is so incredibly painful and so Absolutely. kind of traumatic that they just can't conceive of doing it. And we as pastors, we as other believers, we need to love on those people outside of the doors of the church to such a degree that one day hopefully they'll come to a place of healing. They might feel comfortable coming to the doors of the church yeah. and to meet them where they're at and to the love on them, to encourage them and to build them up and get to a place where they can get to a place where they are contributing again to yeah. the body and they're not just in a place of just utter just devastation from this. Yeah. And that's a big deal, you know? Yeah, and I, and I think if you find yourself in one of those spots, one, um, here from our end, a great mercy towards that church hurts. Yeah. Church hurts are, I think the deepest kind of hurts you're going to experience yeah. oh, in, yeah. in this world. One, two, um, uh, it's like a sucker punch. Yeah. And, and two, I, th- I think this, I think if you, if you can take, you know, and even with all of this that we're given today, we're, we're hitting over like a holistic order of life according <laughs> to God's will. Find one place you can take a baby step. So if a baby step is sure. you've got, a believer you know who's a neighbor, coworker that you feel some level of trust, be willing to say, Hey, can can I talk to you about this? Can I can you help me start to process this? Or maybe you say, Hey, I I'd, I'd like to maybe try to go back to church, but I've got reach out to one of the pastors, follow follow there. Um um, take a baby step, go on a Sunday morning and just be shy and just go and experience, you know, again, to what, take, take baby steps. You should make uh, an, like an extrovert in section that. in the uh, pew where yeah. no one will come talk to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but also in introvert that, no one section. understand too. Um, I, w- I wish I could promise that in trying to take those steps, there was a full ploth way you could never get hurt again. And unfortunately, there's just not because we're 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 we're, de- we're dealing with human beings, yeah. And there's no way to promise that. But what I can promise is is if you will take some baby steps to seek God's healing in those places, it'll it'll uh, it'll be good. I think in that rest is in, in that list as well with physical and mental health comes a major thing of God's. Um, God and in- I do think God intends for our lives to be full in many ways. Right. We've kind of come from this, like, let's be busy every single moment of the day and work hard and lose our families to like, who let's not do any of that. Let's just have nothing on our plate. <laughs> the reality is God calls us to work. Sure. So part of a well-ordered life is a life where we're being faithful to work and, and what that looks like to what God's called us to. Um, yeah. That implies that there's going to be a level of busyness. What we want to stay away from is a level of ungodly busyness. Yeah, hyper busyness. Uh, where we have refused any command to rest and to worship and limitations. And that's uh, that's huge. That's going to impact. And I think, I think that hyper busyness is not just all the things we say yes to, but that hyper busyness is how much we, we pull open stuff on the phone. That hyper busyness is how much we scroll through stuff that hyper that can come out in a lot of ways that apply sure. to physical and, and spiritual health. But I think a well-ordered God honoring life does, does value, does, um, understands that God gave the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Yeah. So we need that. And we're kind of, we might need to wrap this up here, yep. but this one piece of information is absolutely fascinating because you mentioned our phones. They've done some very fascinating studies recently. They've shown that since basically the introduction of social media, mental health has just basically tanked. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just tanked, especially in young women. Uh, mental <clears throat> health has just absolutely just exponentially gone through the roof. And so if you're wondering, you know, if you're struggling with different things, whatnot, think about the order in which you place your life. How much are you engaged in social media and on your phone and comparing yourself to other people? And is that pulling you away from God? Because your phone can be a great tool to order your life, to do devotions, to calendar things that are, that matter. But they can also be a tremendous distraction from things that matter as well. Yeah. And so I would encourage you, make it work for you and don't make it work you, whatever the (laughs) <laughs> cheesy bumper sticker is so again just kind of so, recapsulate yeah. here we're talking about foundations before we can ever get to the point of really going, okay god how do i how do i plan long term my life in, in accordance with your will mm. first we want to go and say hey am i actually in the way that i live and move and breathe on a daily basis am i taking into account the things god has already said in his word hey this is my will for you i'll give you one that's not on this list god's will for you is to flee sexual immorality of all kinds is the way I order my life in such a way that I am actively fleeing that sexual morality. Yeah. Give you a classic example, working with college kids. There are shows as college pastor that my students would order their week to make sure that they watched that show that were filled 
with nudity and graphic, horrific sexual acts. Okay, well, if God's will for my life is I flee sexual morality, then I should not be ordering my week in such that I'm making sure to carve out time to watch that show. Mm. So all this to say is there's it, so much revealed in Scripture, whether you want to call it God's general will or God's moral law or whatever, there's so much revealed about how God intends. And by the way, his order for our life is for joy and good. Yeah. So before we ever get to the, well, how do I plan my life in accordance with God's will? Let's make sure we're not being arrogant in how we order our life yeah. with the things God's made really clear um, but that was and, the quote I pulled from your foundation. That was one of the quotes I pulled from your sermon. It was real short. It was God's plans for us are joyful. God's will for us are joyful, yeah. you know, but that doesn't always mean they're going to be easy. Yeah. And by the way, as you try to take steps to begin to order some of this, don't be surprised if it's a little hard for a bit. Yep. And don't be discouraged by that. Doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I'll leave you with this as we, as we wrap up. <laughs> that end of that passage says, um, to him who knows what is right. It's interesting that he uses this. It's, it goes for so much more than what we're talking about in terms yeah. of how we order our days. But he applies it there. He says, to anyone who knows what is right to do and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Here's the reality. So much of God's will, he's already revealed. Yeah, It's mm-hmm. there to be known. And there was a quote I didn't use Sunday, but it was from a sermon of Jan- from James, from my, actually from my grandfather, where he says, it is a fearful thing to know the will of God, yet refuse to do it mm-hmm. by omission. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Jonah so, right there. There you go. So all this to say is these these are big things. Well, they, they challenge and convict me. I'm sure they do you guys as well. And this will be our longest I episode to, ever. I think yeah. almost uh, I almost know, in an hour. There you go. But it's a new year. You missed us, and so we gave you a lot to think about today. Absolutely. <laughs> it, this is like two episodes in one. Something like that. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. thank you all again for tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully this was encouraging to you as well as you seek to change up maybe some of your orders and change. change up that's my british accent you, coming up a little bit re, uh, maybe redefine some new year's resolutions there you go <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking to one panera bread drink a day uh maybe maybe half of one i think this is actually holds a record for the most mentions of panera yeah. so you I mentioned it three times every now. time you know someone gets Dude. panera bread sh- subscription there's a, a an angel gets swings and i get it no i don't um, four times yeah okay. maybe well all thank right. you for tuning in you can listen to us on you know, all the major pa- podcast platforms you can watch on YouTube, Facebook, but please, please share. Sharing is caring. And if you got a question, contact us. And with that, I think that's it. That's it. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time. See you next time. Y'all have a great day. Bye.